Hello and welcome back to the channel. I hope you have had a good weekend and a great week. Today's gonna to be really, really crazy. Today, we are going on the mission of redesigning the e-bike. Some of you may know who are big into your mountain bikes, whether you've got a trail bike, an enduro bike, a hardtail mountain bike, a jump bike, or any bike. One of the coolest things is when you look at your bike, you want to enjoy how it looks. Now I've had the e-bike black for probably well over a year. I think about 16 or 18 months I've had this bike for. I've gone on a quest today to strip the e-bike completely down and send it off to the Power Dakotas. There's a lot that I'm going to learn along the way. I'm hoping with your suggestion you can help me in the comments below. Any little bits that I'm struggling with. Um, number one, I don't know how to take the bearings out of the frame. That is what I'm really worried about. But there's a way, because there has to be a way because they can swap them out. So I'm gonna find that way today and we're gonna do this. Before we get into the e-bike mods, you will notice the back wall has been painted. We've just hit it with another coat and it looks pretty sick. It's a slightly, it's a slightly lighter gray than this wall. This wall all the way along here is like a dark gray and this is a slightly lighter gray. Um, before we get into a few other updates, I wanted to say you will notice I'm wearing one of the brand new Vibe Orange hoodies. Go and check that out in the link in the description. Don't forget, you get a free t-shirt or a free jersey with every single owner. Hoodie, jacket, joggers or jumper. Go and check that out. You can also get three t-shirts for £25 in the t-shirt bundles. Sick deals, ready for a sick Xmas. Go and check it out. We also have got pink owner hoodies as well. You also can get a free t-shirt or a free jersey with every single pink hoodie that you order. Go and check it out. Link is in the description. Let's get on with today's video. You have got Frenchies. Do your Frenchies do this? You start climbing you like this. And then before you know it, <laughs> actually climb up onto you. Dixie, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's a Frenchy thing. So I have got quite a lot of things to update you guys on. Number one, I've been on these juices. Pretty good. Three juices a day, feeling pretty fresh. Number two, I have sorted the garage out a bit. You will notice, obviously there's a bit of junk there, but you will notice there is quite a bit of space. Brushed all the floor, painted the wall. I've got a lot more to do. I'm asking on my stories some Colour suggestions for the final wall, and then we're pretty much done and painted inside. Looks pretty sick. I also took my Galaxy top tube sticker off the jump bike, because I got quite a lot of comments saying it looked better without it. And in the end, I couldn't help but agree, so I took the Galaxy off the jump bike. That's looking nice and plain. Also, I put this on my stories the other day. This is a new machine polisher that I just bought for my car. This thing's pretty sick. Dars. This is a Dars Pro 6 with a big head on it. A, a heavy polishing pad that I bought. And basically, I've been using this like one step um, compound. So it's called S20 Black. Um, I watched like a YouTube video. I watched like a review on this thing. And they said to start as a DIYer, you want that set up with that. And basically you can hit the car one step and it loosens up and does it a lot. But basically, the long story short is my car is gonna be shiny in the next up and coming weeks. I actually did the bonnet the other day, but I didn't get to show the results because it was raining so bad like it is right now outside. If there's any roof noise, you'll know why, because it's absolutely raining down outside. So, anyways, I just thought I'd show you my new machine polisher. Oh, also, you may have seen this thing. I don't know whether I posted about it, but this is a pretty cool addition to the garage. Little, little trolley for me to take all my car cleaning products outside. Got my cloths at the bottom, snow foam, some cloths I've used. Spray on tyre shine is the future. That's it! Roll over! Oh! Perfect! Play dead! Cleaned all my helmet down ready for a helmet thing. In the, one of the next up and coming videos, I'm gonna be building over here in the corner. 
a big racking section where I can have helmets, goggles, downhill shoes, downhill pants. I'm going to build everything over there in the corner. Nice big racking. It's going to be good. But basically I clean my helmet and I put a brand new peak on, as you can see. Looks pretty sick. I feel as if this mug represents today's video. The struggle is real. I do like it in black. I am going to miss it. But I want, a cha I want a challenge and a project. I am very, very, very nervous about this. We are going to document the condition of the e-bike all the way through this video. We're going to start off with the easiest stuff like the chain. I am going to be buying a new 11-speed hanger or potentially a 12-speed gear group set. Um, basically, my derailleur was... The clutch went on it, which is why I've got this big ugly inner tube all over the back end of the... Um, chain stay. The reason why is because it was smashing the hell out of it. So I already know that I need new gears so I'm probably just going to throw the derailleur away and make myself get new gears. The brakes I'm getting rid of and I'm going to put TRPG spec brakes on and so on so on. But we're going to get straight into it, we're going to check the condition of this bike. I have not touched this bike for a year and a half. It has never been serviced, the motor's never been cleaned, no wires have ever been changed. I watched a video before learning how to take the motor off and they recommended every three to six months you take the motor off, clean it all out, get it all dialed and put it back in. This has never been touched so I'm expecting the worst. Oh, by the way, before we do, I wanted to reference the fact that the bike does work. Check it out, walk assist. The bike is working in full working order. That's walk assist on the bike. So the plan is, the plan is, once I put it back together and we're fully done, I should be able to click walk assist. It should work. Hopefully will be next weekend's video, rebuilding this thing with a riding video in between in the middle of the week. It's gonna be good. Okay, right, let's break this chain down. Let's start this project. I am nervous for the e-bike. I hope to see it on the other side. My very worst case is I'll get the frame done and I'll get help getting it put back together. But the idea is that I won't need to do that. The chain shows the age of the bike. Check it. As you can see, the chain's looking pretty weathered for its age. Not terrible for a year old with no changes, but obviously I definitely do with a fresh chain. We're gonna do the gears. Cut this cable for ease. I'm going to use my little torque wrench. Get all the bits with my little torque wrench. That's what I'm going to be using in today's video. Okay. Is that like a 6mm, 8mm? 6mm. That looks like an 8mm. 6mm. Jesus! Put me through my paces already. What is that? Believable. Oh, it's like a deep five. Oh my god, that was so loose. What the hell? This is the problem. But this is the good thing about full custom builds, is it makes you actually work on your bikes a bit more look at the condition of that destroyed ruthless not good enough mr main not good enough now this is where it's going to get tricky because rooting these cables is going to be grim I might just pull them all out and deal with it later. The rear wheel out. The rear wheel out. Not too bad so far. Bit of rust and stuff on my sprocket, which I'm not overly hyped on. Kind of goes to show that it's been neglected. I haven't been out on the E that much. I went out on it yesterday though, and it was amazing. I went to Landegla and it was flowing. Loads of new lines, some big hits have been put in. So as you'll know, this is my existing 
existing projects desk. I'm gonna put all the e-bike on here until we get it back. Super nervous about this. The wheel is out. It's little things like this magnet and stuff. I just hope this goes back in nice. Because this magnet's what defines your speed, I'm pretty sure. In the, on the inside. But, let's just see. I'll be so gutted if I ruin the bike. But I just, I just want a fresh colour. I just want to mix it up. This is aluminium, by the way, not carbon fibre. A lot of people have been a little bit concerned when I've been writing that I'm going to powder coat it. Because they bake your frame when they powder coat it. Let me just repeat, it is aluminium. It's going to be okay. Now what I think I need to do is cut these little... This inner tube thing that I've put on, I'm going to show you the damage that's been done to this frame. Running, I destroyed rear mech on it. Okay, as you can see, this is like a little DIY rig that I did, which allowed me to run my mech loose still. Not loose, but basically the clutch wasn't resistant enough, so it was slapping my chain on the frame. Oh my Jesus. Look at that. This is gonna be one hell of a restoration. If I can pull this off, I'm gonna be over the moon. Never get rid of it. It rides absolutely amazing. For those of you who know your e-bikes, you'll know the specialized motors and engines and batteries are super torquey. We're gonna start on the motor. Little chain guide at the top there. I know there's one tool. God. Just trying to keep everything exactly how it is. I know there's one tool that I think I need called a castle bolt. I think I've got the tool for it. I hope so. I watched it on the video this morning, learning how to do this. I hope I've got it. I'm gonna take the battery out because I shouldn't be messing with the motor while the battery's in because it'll probably rip my hand clean off. Batteries are pretty straightforward on this thing. As you can see, I got GT85. It was a channel suggestion saying it smelled better than WD40. My God, it does smells nice. And that right there. That is the battery pack for the specialized Kinevo. As you can see. Oh my God. Wow. Look at that. It's not actually in the worst condition, considering it's been neglected for a year. When I say neglected, I mean ridden a lot, like rode a lot. Basically, it's probably one of the bikes that I ride the most off the channel. Not filming, not for content, just getting out for a ride. But Jesus, I tell you what, it is grimy in there. Pretty sick, this little torque wrench. Got to be one of my favorite purchases since having the garage. E-bike cranks. Hope e-bike cranks are coming. That's what I'm going to put on this. I'm calling it now. Hope e-bike cranks. Fox 38. New group set. It's going to be an expensive build, but my God, it is a lot cheaper. A lot cheaper than a brand new e-bike, let's put it that way. I reckon I'm going to spend a couple of grand on this thing, but I'm going to get it unbelievable. Okay, so crank arms off, as you can see. Not in too bad condition. Obviously, it's a bit worn on the outside. These are just standard e-bike cranks. I am hoping to swap these out for Hope cranks. So, that's pretty sick. If you check this out inside, this is called a castle bolt. Now, I've seen this this morning. Basically, I've planned to take the bike apart all week. And I didn't know this was inside the motor until early hours this morning watching how-to videos. Open that I've got a bolt for it. I think this is one. Hope tech, that worries me. I don't think it's gonna work, because that's a hope bolt. No. Ah, oh, pretty rough, but we put these in because we don't have a tool and you, you can't even get one off like someone next day, so it's probably looking like a week for this tool. But basically we've had to use long nose pliers in like that and then an adjustable on it, resisting against the other crank arm. But we've managed to get it out and I don't think it's done it any damage so we're about to find out. So it's called a castle nut. 
on the inside of the BB. And these are another mountain bike thing where you need a specific tool to do the job, as you can see. Pretty intact. Wow. Basically, this is where I'm at. I've removed the castle nut, but now I need another tool, again, to take the sprocket off. I found this online. This is the closest thing I can find to what I need, which is basically a gear pulling tool. Basically, this is, I think, more for cars, but I'm hoping if I get this section here, I can take this out if it's too long and use it to get it off. I want to get this off today because I can't get the motor off the bike until I get this off. So I'm going to continue taking everything off the bike till we're just left with the frame. And then we're going to go and get that tool and try and get the motor off. So stay tuned. This thing is the turbo remote. So this is where you get your walk assist. You can go through your modes um, backwards and forwards. This thing I actually can't undo until I get to the motor. But for now, it can obviously just dangle off the frame. But obviously that goes all the way to the motor down there. So until we hit the motor, we can't actually do that. Oh wow, the E's coming down and down. Every time we touch it, things are coming off it. It's getting emotional. Headset's coming off as we speak. Okay, stem is off. Headset is off. Forks are off. These forks will possibly never be going back on this machine again. These are, I don't think, going to make it back onto this bike. I think we're going to go Fox 38. We will see. God! Okay, headset bearings from the top. Very oily. Headset bearings from the bottom. Okay, we've got like a little holder here, which holds, I think this reads the speed on the wheel at the back over here. And basically, I'm gonna take that out last because that's gonna need to come out when I've got the covers to the engine off. Okay, so pop that bolt back in, but it does free up. Oh no, we've got another one down here. I have to separate the power cable, which reads the speed, to the cable for the brake. Because I'm trying to take the brake off the bike, which is internally rooted in the same place. Oh my Jesus, this is bloody stressful. Let me tell you that. The rear cable is out. Internally rooting these cables shouldn't be that hard because all, all the underneath is completely exposed for the battery. So, fingers crossed, that isn't too bad. Just Just gonna check there's no leftover fluid in this thing because this is dot oil. You gotta kinda gotta kinda watch dot oil. It's quite corrosive in comparison to mineral oil. Lovely. And then, last but not least, the rear brake. Not that into these brakes, I'm not gonna lie. They have done me well. I've never ever had a bleed in over a year. That is something to say, to be honest, but I just never really felt like the bit that much, never got that boom, 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 boom feeling, which is what I'm seeking now. So let's see what brakes we end up going for. Any suggestions would be highly appreciated. The brake is off. All that is left is the power cables, the shock, the bearings on the motor, seat and seat post, but that's easy, the seat and seat post. Basically, this was the only thing I could get hold of today, which is like a gear puller for a car, I'm pretty sure. But it should wear the bigger one on the outside of the sprocket. I'm not sure whether this is gonna bend the sprocket, 
so don't go too crazy. But it does say online that you will feel a slight pop when it comes off. This is the best we've had so far though. Wow, that was crazy. That was really crazy. The big question is, how easy is it to get it undone? That wasn't too bad. That's a pretty heavy chain ring to be fair. Pretty happy that's off though. As you can see now, I can take the plastic cover off, all the internal wiring on both sides. Jeez, I'm glad that worked. If you can't get a tool and you want to take your stuff off, I'd recommend that, worked for me. 10mm Allen key for the other crank arm on the other side. This one should be the same as the other one before where it's just kind of self, un self kind of pulls itself off. Which would make for a very easy install if you were getting aftermarket cranks. It means that you literally wouldn't get an axle. You'd just get two crank arms because the axle's built into the motor. Wow. 3mm Allen key. I think there's one, two, three bolts on the plastic cover. And then we are going to see the condition of the inside of this thing. I'm not sure whether I should be nervous about it. I am actually quite nervous about it. But, I think it's going to be full of mud. Because I do ride it in quite wet conditions. I'm going to see if they're all the same size. Yeah, same size. Let's see if this bottom one's the same size. Because if they're all the same size, I can just leave them in a pile together. That's where I'm at. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so we have got the cover off one side. It's pretty grimy inside there, which means it's been long overdue a clean. This is actually not the side where all the cables go. That's the uh, non-drive side. Yeah, it's the non-drive side where all the cables go. We do, however, have this gear cable running through here. So we're just going to pull that out. But we also have this little thing as well, which I think was in the back of the cover. And that's a slider for the chain guard. So you can adjust where your chain guard goes. So that's pretty cool. Okay. So, what I'm going to do dead quick, I'm going to pull this gear cable out of cable out. I just hope to God when the time comes that I can feed that through. Okay. And then, out of this part of the frame. So that is one more cable. Gone, that's me outer gear cable. Oh my God, it's getting stripped right now. I'm hoping that I'm going to rebuild this next week. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so we've got two long ones on the left side of the frame. And that cover... Oh, we've got another one up there. That was close. Now we've ragged that off then. Ready for this? Okay. Oh my days. It is grimy in there. Jesus. It is super mucky in there. We'll, we'll show you that once we drop the engine out in a minute. Okay, next I'm gonna do, actually, I'm gonna take pictures before I do a single thing. It is grimy inside here. Look at the state of the inside of this. It is ruthless. Absolutely grimy. So I'm taking the battery cable off right now, which is underneath on this little 3mm Allen key on a bolt. And then there's a little... Oh my God, look at that. I don't know whether you can even see how muddy that actually is. This is a long overdue service on this thing. Oh my God. Right now I'm gonna ask a couple of questions for next week's video. Do you have any idea 
how I can get this thing clean. Is there a specific thing I need to buy to clean it? Battery power port. You tell me. I'm all ears right now. Battery cable. Going up there. Now I'm going to take out. I think this is the power cable. Yeah, it is. So this, I'm hoping, will come this way. As you can see, that's the underneath right now. This is the power cable. Wow. And basically, I've been wanting to know how I can fit a screen to my handlebars. So, as you can see, the little guard where the cable comes in, little another little 3mm Allen key. This whole bike's kind of built on 3mm Allen keys. Oh, wow. And then we've got a little cable tie here. This must stop the cable coming out too much. But that right there is that cable. As you can see, So that's the remote, as you can see. Oh Jesus, we are going full mod mode today. Now we've got one cable left, which is this one, which goes through underneath the top. Oh, I'm gonna take these two off. Okay, it's pretty simple in there. Comes behind the chain stay here. It comes along here, and then obviously over the motor, down the back of the bros motor. As you can see, we're going to take it out right now, like so. And then we're going to deal with that in a second. That's the last piece of electronics to come off. I'm just going to work on getting the motor off right now. I'm not 100%... I'm not 100% sure how you get the motor off, so I'm just going to try a few different things. I think this bolt up the top. Basically, that one is coming off first inside there. Looks like this size. Yep, it is. No, it's not. What is that? 14. We need a 13. That we now have. Yeah, I can feel it dropping as we speak. And then this is unbelievable how mucky it is. It is actually quite simple. Just takes time. To be honest, even if I was never going to get it powder coated, like if I go to the powder coaters and they're not comfortable, if I go to the... If I go to the powder coaters and they're not comfortable with all the little threads and holes and stuff, I will just spray paint it myself. I'd still be happy with that. Just any colour. I'm not the worst of spray paint, or, or I'd just take it to a car sprays or something. There we have it. The motor. Look at that on the bottom. Caked in mud. That is extreme. Wow. What a machine. What a machine. I think this little plug here is for my screen. I'd have to find out. I'm going to start with the bottom linkage. I don't know what this is going to look like. I am nervous. That is what I can tell you. The one thing I'm being super cautious of while I'm doing this today is I don't want any washers to drop out that I don't know about. Oh. Linkage on the back, as you can see is out. No washers on the inside. 
No washers there either. Oh no, there is washers. Sorry. Basically, we've got one, two washers for the inside of the linkage at the back. So I'm going to cut right now and I'm going to start making notes. I've got bag number one, motor, chainstay, linkage, as you can see. I've popped it out. Hole at the bottom of the frame is loose right now. I'm so nervous, you have no idea. But I think it's I think it, it is just a thing. Everything screws in, everything pops out. Why can't we do it? There's no reason why we can't do this. So we've got, we're gonna put that safely to one side. Now we're gonna do chain stay to seat stay linkage. Let's go. Now all I want to do is make a note of how these washers sit on both sides. So the same as the others, they're just popped in there. Okay, so we've got two on each side. As you can see we've got like one little one and a rubber gasket round it. That's alright, that seems pretty straightforward. Okay, be right back, gonna make a bag. I'm gonna to have to ask everyone the big question. And the big question is, how do I get the bearings out of all the frame bits? I wanna get the bearings out. I know you can buy a tool to put them in. I just don't know whether you can buy a bearing extractor. So any help with that would be very, very useful. Very useful. Okay, this bit I've been a little bit nervous about because I can see I'm actually going to take some pictures, two seconds. Okay, Mr. Main, this is your camera roll showing you what the hell you did last week. There's washers in between the linkage, mate. You're going to have to put washers in between. Do not mess that up. This is me talking to my future self. So basically now, I'm taking what I think is going to be the last side out okay so this is the linkage to seat post be right back okay and now i think to take that off i think i have to take that off first which is also going to be quite stressful i think this is the most stressful procedure of the situation getting the linkage off properly i want these little washers before they hit Oh, as I said it, we've already hit the ground. So these little washers, looks like there's two on each side of the inside, but they look like they're just spacing the linkage out. So as you can see now, the linkage is nice and loose. Be right back. Okay, this bit, I don't know how this is gonna be because this is basically another situation where What's on the other side of this? Another one. I don't know. Okay. The 8mm is on the left side of the bike. I'm going to film a video to my future self. This is a big project, this. Okay, Mr. Main, on your front shock linkage, you have a shorter bolt on the left side, as you can see, mate, goes on the left side. And on the right side, you've got your flush bolt, which is your long one, which goes all the way through. See you next weekend. My future self's nuts, you know, doesn't listen to a thing I say. As you can see, little washers on either side of that. Oh, popping off. I'm going to tape this like this. The good thing is, I don't have to do any bearings on this because I'm leaving this black. So the front end of the frame doesn't need... Yeah, it does. I was going to say, it doesn't need any bearings popping out of it, but it does down here. So there we have it. All I've got to do is the seat and the seat post and the seat clamp. Do you know what? I'm just going to do it now. Okay, we are... Creeping 
straight into the end of today's video. I don't know if you guys are as excited as me. But right here, we have once completely stripped down e-bike frame. Oh my god. I don't even know what to think. On the, on the ground right now, that is an e-bike frame with no motor, no battery, no nothing. The only thing I've got to do before we can get it some paint or powder coat is get these bearings out of the linkage. Not the link, bearings out of the seat stay, the chain stay and the back of the frame. We are this close to getting this thing painted. Any help with the bearings would be really appreciated. Any colour ideas would be even more appreciated. Get excited. I'm praying that I have this bike with a fresh coat by next weekend. Make sure you tune in for a riding video midweek and that's going to be the end of today's video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you go and check out Crazy Deals on Owner. We've got three t-shirts for £25 in a bundle deal. We've also got new hoodies, both orange, pink. We've got loads of tan, loads of red. We've got loads of black. We've got grey hoodies. We've got everything. Go and check that out. You get a free t-shirt or a free jersey with every single hoodie, jacket, joggers, jumpers. I think that's it. Thanks for watching. What an amazing episode. I'll see you next week. Oh, I'll see you in a few days for a riding video. Peace out.